Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PL SQL developers. We are seeing the cursor related interview questions as a continuation of that. In this video, we will see about what is a parameterized cursor and what is a far cursor. In the previous video, we have seen about what is a cursor and what are the types of cursor. And in another video, we have seen about how to use the explicit cursor and how to declare open fetch and close the cursor subsequently we have seen about the attributes of the cursor and how to use these attributes as part of implicit cursor as well as explicit cursor as a continuation of that in this video we will learn about parameterized cursor let me first explain you through some set of examples then we'll come back to this slide in fact this is the example we have seen in the explicit cursor video what we are doing here is that i'm just declaring a cursor which is just going to uh, fetch the list of employee names from employee table and I'm just opening the cursor here and I'm just looping through the cursor to fetch each and every name from the memory location and we are just printing. Finally, we are just closing this. First, let me execute this. Then from here, we'll start understanding why we need to go for the uh, parameterized cursor. Okay, so as expected, this program is just printing the list of employees from the employee table. Fine, let me just copy the same example. From here, we'll just start understanding how to write a parameterized cursor. Suppose if our requirement is, if you want to print the list of uh, employees who are working in department 10, and then at some point of time, you want a list of employees who is working in department 20, and in some other place, you want uh, employees of department 30. So for normally what we'll do, we'll just create one cursor for each department. Okay, so I'm just uh, aligning in a single line normally i won't recommend you this you always format your code properly i'm just putting in a single line uh, so that i can show you the entire code in the single page itself okay so what i'm going to do i'm just going to create one cursor for employee name list 10 to fetch the information from department 10 so i'm adding this where condition where department number equal to 10 same way just i'm going to uh, define another cursor called employee name list 20 to fetch the information of uh, employees who is working in department 20 as you can see here we just declare two cursor so first i'm just going to open the first cursor fetch the information for, from the first cursor i'm exiting out the first cursor if it is not found that means the moment the first cursor reaches the end of record we are just exiting out and we are just printing the name finally i'm closing so let me just put a meaningful header here saying that we are just printing the information from employees 10 so employee from department number 10 fine now i am just going to copy the same set i'm just going to paste it here basically to print the information from department 20 since we have already declared a cursor here for 20 i am just now opening the second cursor fetching the information from second cursor exiting when the second cursor is not found finally after printing i'm just closing now I hope the uh, code is clear. So what we are doing is we are basically uh, declaring two cursor. One cursor for fetching the employees working in department 10. That is our first cursor employee name list 10. Same way the second cursor is basically to fetch the list of employees working in department 20. So we just opened, fetched, looped through and closed the first cursor. Same way second cursor. Now let me just execute this. Let us see the output. Yeah, as expected, the first cursor is printing the employees working in department 10. Same way, the second cursor is printing the inf uh, list of employees working in department 20. Fine. But the problem of this code is, see, we are trying to reuse the same functionality, but for that, it's not necessary that we have to write two different cursor. Let us just quickly modify this code. So I'm just copying the same code here. So instead of declaring two cursor, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to declare only one cursor and instead i'm just going to declare one variable called department number number so instead of the hard coded value 10 i'm just going to put the variable here now what i'm going to do i'm just going to open this cur same cursor fetch it exit finally close it same way i'm just going to copy the same code here okay to fetch the information 20 so one key thing what i'm going to do before opening the cursor i'm just going to assign 10 to this variable same way i'm just going to assign 20 before opening the second cursor yeah now if you see 
this is exactly the same code what we wrote in the previous example but one difference is instead of declaring two cursors we are trying to use only one cursor and the one difference i have written is instead of hard coded value i have used a variable here so before opening this cursor whatever the value we are assigning that is in this case we have assigned 10 to this variable so the qu query will get opened for the select statement like select ename from employee where department number equal to 10 same way for the second opening so in this case that is line number 18 and 19 if you see before opening the cursor we are assigning the department number equal to 20 so in this case when it opens the cursor it will open for the uh, list of employees who is working in department 20 okay so this is a bit more efficient way compared to the previous case because in previous example we are actually using two cursor now in this example we just reduce to one cursor however exactly the same functionality we are able to achieve using the one cursor itself okay let me just execute and show you the output as expected here also we are just getting the exactly the same output that is it's just printing the list of employees working in department 10 followed by list of employees working in department 20. in fact the same example can be little bit modified for bit more efficiency okay i just copied the same example now instead of declaring the variable what i'm going to do i'm going to declare a parameter here so i'll say p department number number now what i'm going to do instead of the variable i'm just going to use the parameter instead of variable as you can see here in the cursor declaration line number three previously in this place we were using a variable but now i'm using the parameter so since the variable is not there i'm just removing these two variables the way you need to uh, pass the variable is or sorry the parameter is as while opening the cursor you just need to pass the parameter something like this so while opening the second cursor i'm just passing the parameter as 20 so that the first cursor will get opened for the select statement select ename from employee where department equal to 10 basically what will happen is this parameter will be passed as input here this p department will be assigned as a value at the runtime so while opening the first cursor the cursor will open for department 10 same way while opening the second cursor the cursor will open for the department 20. now let me just execute and show you the output now if you can see here we are getting the exact output from the first uh, example as well as the second example the main advantage of parameterized cursor is like uh, reusability of the same cursor in multiple places if you want to use the same select statement for multiple cases whereas just there is a difference in the var condition you can go ahead with the parameterized cursor so this is a much more uh, reusable code and a much more re uh, flexible fine now let us see an example for for cursor okay so i'm just again taking the first example so in this case what we are doing is we are just getting the list of employees from employee name so instead of this what we can do is we can use the for cursor so for cursor is very simple we just need to use for i in that is a for variable so whatever the select statement you want to loop through you can just give it here remove the, the semicolon loop in loop okay now you can see dbms output dot put underscore line so i dot ename fine so since all these things are not necessary we can just completely remove the declaration part itself let me just align it for better readability here yeah fine let me just execute this code and show you yeah now if you see it's just printing the list of employee list of employees from the employee table see the main advantage of for cursor is suppose if you are going to use the cursor just only once in your code and you have no plans to reuse the same cursor anywhere then it is better to use the for cursor because the for cursor will automatically taking care of opening looping through and closing the cursor we don't have to explicitly write a keyword like open fetch exit and close instead all these things will be taken care by the loop itself we just can access the value by using the for cursor variable so you can just use this variable and you can do whatever the functionality you prefer to so this is an example for for cursor let us see one more example okay so in fact let us see in fact let us see two more examples uh, let me first copy the same uh, 
cursor whatever we saw initially so that we'll just modify see uh, it's not necessary that you have to give only the select statement as far of, as part of the for cursor instead you can even use the explicit cursor also so let me show you how to use the explicit cursor so in this case i'm just going to remove all these things so instead of that, I am just going to use for i in. So instead of select statement, you can just use the cursor variable, whatever the cursor you have defined. So this will allow you to reuse the cursor, whatever you have defined earlier. In loop. Okay, so I'm just going to say i dot in. in. Fine. So anyway, this variable is not necessary. Let me remove it. Let me just execute and show you. Now, if you see, we are just getting the list of employees. The main advantages of advantage of using the explicit cursor as part of the far cursor is a reusability. Even in other some other places, you can just use the uh, same cursor uh, because we are using the advantages of the far cursor as part of the explicit cursor as well okay let us see the actual usage here uh, in fact this example i just showed you using an explicit cursor without any parameter let us see an example with parameter suppose if you want to fetch information like uh, employees are working in department 10 as well as in 20 so let us create a parameterized cursor so let me say p department number number so this is the parameter uh, let me put the var condition where department number equal to you just need to mention the parameter name here so while opening the cursor you just need to pass the parameter exactly similar to how we used to open the parameterized cursor so let so here is an example so let me just put some header here for easy readability so this is for the employees of department number 10 okay same way i'm just going to use print for department 20 as well so let me just paste the same code department 20 i'm just going to pass the parameter here yeah let me just re-execute the code as you can see we are just printing the employees of department 10 as well as employees of department 20 using the parameterized cursor as part of for loop so this is an example for for cursor let us just quickly uh, recap our learning here so the key learning as part of parameterized cursor is we can even pass a parameter as part of the cursor and while opening the cursor you need to pass the parameter so this information will be passed to the parameter and will be assigned to the parameter value whatever you have used as part of the select statement at the runtime the main advantage is that like reusability you can just give you can open the same cursor for multiple departments fine let us see an example for for cursor see the uh, while we are working on the explicit cursor we just need to follow few steps and in the sequential order only something like you need to open loop through fetch and exit whenever it's not found finally close so this is the exact step you need to follow but while opening while using the for cursor for cursor will take care of all these things in fact open fetch exit and close all these four operations are taken care by for cursor as a developer you just need to fetch the information and you need to work on the information whatever you want to prefer so this is an advantage of for cursor one more advantage is that in case if you are not planning to use the same cursor anywhere you can just declare the select statement as part of the for cursor in fact the disadvantage is that since this is an unnamed select statement we will not be used anywhere except this for loop uh, the next is like a explicit cursor for loop statement that is instead of a select statement we can even use the explicit cursor whatever you have defined okay the key advantage is that we are actually reusing the explicit cursor as part of the for so we are getting the advantage of advantage of both explicit cursor and the for cursor in fact we can use the parameterized cursor also so you just declare the parameter as part of explicit cursor while opening the for cursor you need to pass the parameter something like this so this will just get assigned to the parameter uh, value at the runtime the rest of the cursor related questions something like a ref cursor and for update and where current of class cursor versus collections and named cursor versus ref cursor all these things we'll see in the subsequent videos if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video interview question sql practical question and concept videos if you have any questions you can drop 
to this mail id or you can drop in the comment section thanks a lot for watching this video